Yeah, let's go. Uh, yeah, yeah. We came a long way. That's what the song say. And I could do all. Today, from TIAA Bankfield in Jacksonville, Florida, this is Madden NFL 21 on EA Sports. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Tennessee Titans. Schmack dab in the middle of I-295 that encircles the city of Jacksonville in Northeast Florida. There's a good look at TIAA Bank Field. A few minutes prior to us coming on air, this crowd was jolted into action with the introduction of these Jaguars. They're set for football as the Jags are ready to match up with the Tennessee Titans. Josh Lambeau set to go, and we are underway here in Jacksonville. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here comes the Tennessee offense, and you see Ryan Tannehill leading them out. A terrific athlete, started at wide receiver before becoming the starting quarterback at Texas A&M and also took his studies pretty seriously as well. He was a biology major at Texas A&M, Plan to become an orthopedic surgeon, but being the eighth pick in the NFL draft, that paid just a little bit better. Let's go! On the ground, this is Derek Henry. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. What a way to start a drive. An excellent run, a tone setter, and now if you want to take a shot on second down and go play action and make it look like the same exact play and throw it over the top, you can do so because you've established the run in a big way. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Here's Tannehill. He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. On second down, here's Henry. Shows his strength at the 50. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a first down on a gain of 10. They did tell us they wanted to establish the ground game early, didn't they? They did, and a small sample size that we've seen so far, but pretty good return. Yeah, you got to like that. They've strung together a couple of first downs, established what they wanted, the running game. And guess what? They also got their lead guy running it pretty well, too. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 46. A shotgun handoff to Henry. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. 
That was another good run, and he's having an excellent day. And right now, I don't think his team could have any more confidence in handing him the football. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. They'll try the air now with Tannehill. Looking deep for Julio. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by Sidney Jones. So here are the Jags now set to get their first drive. And they will be led out by their six foot six quarterback. It's pretty much become the norm when we see guys come out before a game and go through the route tree with their receivers. I thought it was exciting for us to see the exact same thing happen in practice. He's, not, so, he's so meticulous, isn't he? He really is, and it's not. that tells me it's not just a one-time-a-week thing. They work on it all the time, trying to hone that fine edge. They want to see if they can get in sync and stay in sync in this one. Now a first carry here for Robinson. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Second and nine now from the 21. Ain't no such thing as a loss. We take a win. <laughs> and a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Only gets three yards there on the heels of the one-yard pickup. Sets up third and six. play fake he'll look to throw pressure comes and the Titans able to bring him down it's Jeffrey Simmons that time who got in to record the sack well they go play fake the problem is nobody was faked out <laughs> and when no one's faked out what's the end result sack. quarterback gets hit <laughs> On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. And this will be touched by a member of the kicking team right on the midfield stripe. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. Now they were intercepted the first time they had the football, but now they get it back and it's still 0-0. And because of that, you know what the thought process is? Interception? What interception? It didn't really happen because they gave up no points. So go back on the attack. Go back and run the offense you believe will be successful. Find your playmakers and give them the football. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. He'll look to throw right away. Quick slant to Brown. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Two yards, good enough for a first. And that run wasn't just for a first down. That was for some confidence. They've had a tough day moving the ball on the ground this entire game. I think after that one, they'll feel a little bit better about themselves, and now they got more downs to try and get it done. They keep it with Henry on first down. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. 
Derrick Henry. And he is close to a first down as he's tackled at the Jaguars 28. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels, you know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. A first carry now. This is Hill. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. That's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football. Knowing full well, he's got a man coming his way full steam, and he broke that one up. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. Letting one go deep for the end zone. Jacksonville's pass defense holds serve. Fourth down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Tucker McCann out now for the Titans field goal. This a 43-yard attempt. McCann's kick up and good. And the Titans hit the scoreboard first. It's three to nothing. So a good kick there, and they put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But in the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. Be able to knock the ball through the post and take the three. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Not Either the, way. Not the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Jamal Agnew now to return it. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Yeah, 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 yeah. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. And they'll begin by running the option. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. They'll look to throw here. Sets up the screen to Robinson. So the screen good for only two. Now it's third down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game.
The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. He's going to drop this underneath for Robinson. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. I just know defensively, when you see third and long, you just tell each other, guard the sticks. Don't let them get to the first down line. Anything underneath, we'll make the play. But you have to take care of all responsibilities and know that they swing it out to a back. One-on-one -on -one tackles in the open field are critical. And if you miss, sometimes you end up on the wrong side of that first down game. Back to throw now on first down. Caught on the right side by Jones. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard and it's second down. Just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. Johnson with a completion over the middle. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third and one. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. They've shown very little offensively to this point. Well, neither team has, really. And they come up here now first down. Start on the ground, it's Derrick Henry. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. And the 2015 first round pick, Malcolm Brown brings him down. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? <laughs> you talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster, yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in, he's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 15 yards on the play, first down. The beauty of route running is it doesn't matter what position, everyone's doing the same thing. In this case, tight end, selling the vertical route. Get the defensive back on his heels, break off for the corner, and with good timing, you get a completion, as we just saw there. Tannehill on first down. Flushed out right. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Tannehill's going to hang on to this. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight.
Three nothing after one on EA Sports. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. This is Henry. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. Partner, in our years together, we've never really run into a player that's admitted a, a doubt or a lack of confidence, right? But right now, I'm just wondering about that interior line because on defense, they're starting to get manhandled at the point of attack. Do they have it in them to figure a way to reverse the tide? Because right now, they're running the ball at will. Henry. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. I remember watching Derrick Henry come out of Alabama and sitting with some scouts, and one of the debate points with him was, while at Bama, how often did he have to deal with contact near the line of scrimmage? They were so good up front that he often got to the second level pretty easily. I think he's starting to answer those questions with runs like that. He's a physical, physical guy. A first red zone opportunity for the Titans. It's first and 10 from the 12. To throw is Tannehill. Buying time to his left. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. But there was pressure all around him, so the only play was to try and get out of there. I think it was an excellent effort by him just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10. Draw play. This is Henry. And he will score. Touchdown, Titans. Taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Titans find a way to stretch their lead. And on his way to the end zone, shedding the tackle, he would not be denied. That's what's called finishing the run. Making sure you power your way through. One-on-one -on -one tackle. No running back wants to go to the bench and say, ah, I got stopped just short. A try here for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. So that drive goes eight plays. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. To return, here's Agnew. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. Nothing for him yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10 zip as they come up first and 10.
Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You're putting a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. The opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And able to find Dorsett. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. shotgun now here's an inside give and he gets this inside the 35 yard line another nice gain that's now 30 yards between those last two plays those are the types of run charles that they say this first year running back can provide a lot more of in the future he made it look easy didn't he picking up that first down some have described him as a diamond in the rough with a lot of polish nice little buffing this guy could be one of the top backs going forward From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll drop the throw. On the slant, this is Chark. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. They'll get 13 yards for the second play in a row. the shotgun now here's an inside give and a couple of yards as they move it from the 21 to the 19 there on the stop that time Trevon Coley well he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far and after that last run not much is going to change in that area he hasn't been able to get anything going and really the offensive line not helping him much here's second and eight and that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. He'll look to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. A rough go there on third down, a loss of four. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. So on fourth down, Jags kicker Josh Lambeau comes on. And this one, a 41-yard attempt. 
The kick by Lambeau is good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. Now this will make it into the end zone. And no return here for Evans as they will bring this out to the 25. And Derek Henry and the rest of the Titans offense about ready to roll again. He's in a zone, second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has. And that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a 1,000-yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games. Maybe we need to up that a little. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Josh Allen, he's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. So third and long after the sack, tough task for Tannehill and the Titans. From the gun, here's Tannehill. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Miles Jack working free that time to take him down. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. Here's Brett Kern now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A well executed 22 yard gain. shotgun now here's an inside give it's a six yard pickup but it gets him to second and four they'll set up a throw and that'll be incomplete. 
Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. The Jaguars on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and four. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Nothing flashy there. The slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play, and you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch, and then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. They'll run it now with Robinson. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Well, that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working. But how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. They'll look to throw. Fourth down now as the Titans' defense holds up in coverage. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. This is an easy one, 23-yarder. And Lambeau will put this one through, and that'll bring him back within four. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made him kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. Now after the main field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. And this will make it into the end zone. And no return here for Evans as they will bring this out to the 25. Derrick Henry trots back out there and gets ready to go. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He'll start with a give to Henry. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Now that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You can come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum. Or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top. Or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try and pick it up on third down. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. Forced out to his left, and he's going to keep it here. And now he lost the football. Tannehill loses it. Anytime that ball comes to me, I'm trying to take it to the 
much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. First down throw, Tannehill. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. And another thing that makes a comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Tannehill with a play fake to Henry. He'll throw instead. That's complete to his tight end, Ferkser. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. First down, it's Tannehill. Dancing to his left. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Now let's see who this is on. And since the penalty occurred in the end zone, move the ball to the one-yard line. First and goal from the one-yard line. Costly penalty. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Titans are able to extend their lead. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. And what I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half. And now to give us momentum going into the second half, give us that cushion that we're looking for. They got that accomplished, scoring right before the half ended. Out comes the kicking team here for the extra point. It's good, and now it's an 11-point lead, 17-6. to six. A drive that time of six plays, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. To return, here's Agnew. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, 
right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Out routes are always timing routes. And if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. Looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. Let's go, D. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Looking for Chark again. This time he's got him. And he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. 12 yards there and a first down. Now how about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. A first and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. And this one into the hands of DJ Shark. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. to throw now on first down. That's once again complete to Chark. Touchdown, Jaguars! DJ Chark, 49 yards. And the Jaguars are back within a score. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. Bangs it through and makes it a 17-13 ball game. So that drive, four plays, and it culminates in a Jags touchdown. the touchdown he'll kick this one away and not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23 let's go let's go and here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field and with time quickly fading here in the second quarter not sure how aggressively offensively they want to play this I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Clock at 20 seconds to go in the half as they come up first and 10. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach and our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports halftime report. We saw Derrick Henry muscle his way through a strong first half. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Short pass, Eifert on the receiving end. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. The throw complete to Dorsett. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. First down, he'll drop to throw it. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. Let's go. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit, and it forced an incompletion. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. They'll look to throw again. Caught Eifert over the middle. And this won't be enough. A good, secure tackle, and they stop him a few yards shy at the 46. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. Here's Logan Cook now, as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. <laughs> And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at about the 32. Out of the gun, he'll throw. His throw incomplete. He was looking for Josh Reynolds that time, but it'll be second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. 
<laughs> now it's Henry. And he winds up getting this all the way down to the Jags 28. 39 yards there, a big one. And we were down on the field watching Henry warm up before the game. He's a big man. No wonder he breaks those tackles. And you remember what I told you when we were watching? It's not all pads. I yeah. mean, you get him out of pads and just see him in a regular suit or an outfit, he is a huge human being and a lot faster than what people know. When he gets rolling, he's a lot to bring down. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. They'll run with Henry. Eventually wrangled down before reaching the 20, but a strong run. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. After another impressive run, the question has to be asked, how do you slow these guys down running the football? I think they're going to try and get more people to the point of attack, try and get more people to the line of scrimmage, almost use a variety of run blitzes in order to try and get it done. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. They pick up the first down there with a gain of 11. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and ten. And he'll give it here to his running back. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there, second down. That time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame, had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage, but you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Tannehill. That is caught at the seven yard line. And here he'll get it down to the seven. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Here's Tannehill to the goal line, but it's incomplete. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. McCann's kick up and good. And that'll make this a seven-point game. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays, yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine-play drives pay dividends later with another nine-play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. 
And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. They trail 20 to 13 our score as they have it first and 10. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Up front, the struggles continue for this offense among the line. What can they do? Change the play calling? What? I think part of that, yes, changing some of the play calls, some screens, some draws, some misdirection. You want to run any type of a play that will influence these guys and continue to get upfield and find a way to use that against them and slip things in behind them. So some quick passes could work as well. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Oh, this is off the side of his foot. And yeah, they'll be set up in great starting field position here as that's out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Here comes Ryan Tannehill now leading his offense back out there. He's been a good game manager. They're winning here in the third quarter, but really the ground game is where it's been at for them, hasn't it? So whatever the game plan was, you just got to focus on continuing to run the football. And really, that takes the pressure off of the guy throwing it around. Doesn't have to be the focal point. Hand it off. Let him chew up the yardage in big plays. And your team's winning. The only people upset, the fantasy guys who may have started him at quarterback <laughs> in their leagues. And we'll see if they continue with a recipe of the ground game. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Back to throw, Tannehill. This is Jeff Swain, the tight end. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Off play action, Tannehill. Man open left side is Brown. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. Come on, you serious dog? So offense moving a little too slow there, could not get set, and they get the penalty.
Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. After the penalty, it's Henry. And flags come in as he gets forward for about three yards. Now let's check on the call. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. Tannehill. A short throw, and it's going to be pulled in by Ferkser. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. <laughs> now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. Maybe anticipating a blitz, and they jumped. Yeah, and if we saw it, you know that they saw it. The bad guys might have been coming on that play. Had to pick them up, and they jumped. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Throwing again is Tannehill. Quick hitter here, it's complete. It's a gain of nine yards. And it'll be a third and about 13. <laughs> Tannehill throwing again. Throw left side complete. It's Brown. And he's going to be taken down short of the first, right around the 15-yard line. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves him just short for fourth down. And that big gain may just change the thought process here on fourth down. I think in the red zone, they might now consider going for it on fourth down. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. McCann's kick up and good. And that will extend their lead even further. So three field goals that he's hit. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Bring it, baby, bring it! Look at DJ Chark as he and the rest of the offense head back out. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes... That means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Yeah, a quick throw here. That's complete. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. More muscle up front for this second and two. They've got three tight ends out there. They run. Robinson. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. 
four yards the pick up first down. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. So still 14 yards to go, second down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. A slant to Jones. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. He'll look to throw. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Here's Logan Cook now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That'll go as a punt of 32 yards, and it'll be Titan football. The Titans now just about ready to take over, and they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. They begin with Henry, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. If they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. They'll run it again with Henry. He's got a first down and more past the 30 as he'll get this one up to the 44-yard line. Back now in Jacksonville. It's the Titans. They've got the football. They'll be looking to extend their lead here as we begin the fourth quarter. carry for Henry. Shaquille Griffin in on the stop defensively. Second and eight, Tannehill. And that's off the mark, incomplete. And there was a good opportunity to just want to ride there, a drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. Go, 
The Titans on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and eight. Tannehill now to throw. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. Now with that interception, you feel like we got a ball game again. Remember, two-score contest and still time left here in the fourth. And in the old days, not too long gone either. Throwing the ball here would have been an absolute no-no, but the way the game's played now, throwing it makes sense. You just have to be careful when you put it in the air. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 45. They'll drop to throw. Now they go screen. It's complete. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. I don't know how well our microphones are picking it up for those of you at home, but uh, Charles, you and I can hear it. A lot of groans right now coming from this crowd. I don't know if we're picking up what's happening in the stadium or from the people who are supporting this team at home because it's coming through loud and clear to you and me. This offense, they've been stuck in neutral much of the game. And on that last play, they actually went in reverse. I think this crowd would have liked neutral, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> neutral would have strongly been preferred. They'll take anything positive at this point. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A Jacksonville first down on a pickup of 17. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. The left side completion to Jones. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. This will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. He will push his way down to about the 14. They get one yard back there to make it second and 14. That's a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on it before he could get much out of it. Second and 14. Again, he'll drop to throw. 
He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. Jeffrey Simmons. He's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. You yeah. see what I did there? Yeah. He okay. needs better protection, that's for sure. Got an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. He'll look to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This will be a 34-yard attempt. The kick by Lambeau is good. And this is back down to a seven-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambo to kick this one off. Takes this about five yards deep. And no return here for Evans as they will bring this out to the 25. The time again to see what Ryan Tannehill and the Titans can do. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Again, it's Henry. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. The Titans on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and four. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And now he lost the football. Tannehill loses it. And the Jags grab it. And he brings this one back. A fumble return for a Jacksonville score. So they were down by a touchdown, probably just hoping the defense could hold them, maybe force the punt. Instead, they force the turnover and take it into the house. Well, the plan was perfect. That's exactly what they wanted. Instead, they got a lot more than that. Big-time capitalization by taking the ball away and putting it in the end zone. Lambo on for the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six.
So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. Now this will make it into the end zone. And no return here for Evans as they will bring this out to the 25. And here comes the Jags defense as they get back out there. And they had the fumble return for a touchdown, and boom, they're right back out there again. And you hear so many people talk about opportunistic defenses in today's football. Well, they make their own breaks because they work at it all the time. We've been at the practices, the drills where they're trying to strip the football, the takeaways. They're always working on it, and it paid off for them on the last possession. Paid off. Now can they do it again? Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Derrick Henry, and he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Here's Tannehill. It's complete to Brown, right side. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Jet sweep with Brown. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. On second down now. It's Henry, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher, third and six. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. The Titans on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This will be third and six. From the gun, here's Tannehill. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. They had enough yards for the first down, but a clutch hit right there defensively. Jars it free. No first down. Here's Brett Kern now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. They begin the drive with Robinson. The tackle was by the Boston College product, Harold Landry. Second and nine now. He finds Dorsett, it's complete. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Yeah, 
The battle in the trench is never more important than right now. This is third and inches. He'll drop to throw. And able to find Dorsett. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. And forget the run on third and one. They shock the D and rip off a pretty big play. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Looking sideline, incomplete. DJ Chark, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. So much for the best laid plans and best design plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. It always helps when you get great run support from your safeties, and when you get one who can actually read the play and get upfield and shut it down before it gets going, that's exactly what you're looking for. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And a nice job there defensively. They get him to the ground short of the first, right around the 42. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They'll look to throw. This is Johnson. He's got it. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Facing a fourth down, they come away with 18 yards and the first down conversion. Well, they did the part they had to do. Quick throw, got the first down. But that doesn't allow them to relax. They still have plenty of work to do. down Robinson the Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as he'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining eight yards the tally on that first down run here's second and two Again, it's Robinson, and this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Set, 
They'll run here with Robinson. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Now a timeout being called as there's an injured Titan down on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Now, what's the thinking here? Because a touchdown would be nice, but you've ensured yourself a chance at three in the lead, so how worried are you about the six? You're not very worried about if you're confident in your kicker. And if you got a kicker who can put it through the post, you feel really good about trying to bleed that clock down. In an ideal scenario, your kicker puts it through the post as the clock hits zeros. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. But forget knowing where the first down line was. This defense created their own line of scrimmage. They won every battle up front. And a lot of times that is one-on-one. -on -one. And if you win your one-on-ones enough times, your defense is going to be pretty good. They had more people to the football and snuffed out the play. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. Three for three so far, and a fourth would win him. And it is good! He splits the uprights on the chip shot, and the Jaguars have won the game! Well, a little drama there at the end, but really this thing was already decided. The late points get scored, and then it ends on the kickoff. And I'm right there with you, partner. At the end of the game, they knew what they had to do. Just make sure you don't cough up the football at the end. Just take care of it, and victory was theirs, and that's exactly what they did. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Jaguars are winners here as we say so long from Jacksonville.